Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, before we get started on the Azure Developer 30 Days to Learn It Challenge kickoff, I do want to go over just a few things. First of all, we ask that you please read our reactor code of conduct. Um, we ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone, including our speaker. We want the reactors to be a place that everyone feels welcome. Please go ahead and ask your questions using the Teams chat, or you are welcome to use the raise your hand function or come off mute and turn on your camera to ask your questions. When you're not asking a question, though, we do ask that you stay muted to reduce the background noise um, so that everyone is able to hear our speaker today. So if you've attended a reactor session before, this one might be a little bit different than what you're used to. Um, we are going to be kicking off an Azure Developer 30 Days to Learn It Challenge, and I'm going to share the link to that in the chat right now. So let me do that really quick. There we go. So that link is there in the chat. And Basically, once you sign up for the challenge, you'll have 30 days to complete the learn modules. If you complete all the modules and complete the challenge in the 30 days, you'll receive a 50% off voucher to take the certification test. However, you won't have to go through the challenge alone. Sydney Andrews, who's one of our Microsoft MVPs and a subject matter expert, will be helping you along the way with twice a week study groups. He'll give you some tips and tricks. He'll be able to answer questions um, that you have or help you in places that you might be stuck, um, as well as be reviewing some of the modules each week. So to find the links to the upcoming study groups, you can check out the GitHub page, and I will share that in the chat here as well. There we go. Um, so that also has the link to the challenge, but then it has the um, it has all of the study groups coming up with the dates and times if you want to attend any of those and check those out. Um, once you complete the the challenge, you should receive the certification um, voucher, fifty percent off voucher, in within three days of completing everything, and then. Um, yeah, and Sydney will build, has taken the test before, so he'll be able to give you some tips and tricks there as well. So I'll continue to share the links to everything in the chat. And when you do click on the link to the challenge, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's some other frequently asked questions um, around like when you should receive the uh, voucher and how to receive it and all of that. So make sure to check that out. But I will now pass it over to Sydney and he will walk you guys through signing up as well as go over some tips and tricks. Wonderful. While I'm going to set up, it looks like somebody has their hand raised. Uh, you can, of course, come off mute or um, if you want to ask your question. This is a team's meeting, so please, you know, feel free to um, ask your question. And if it hasn't already been stated, this is being recorded. Um, for the benefit of anyone who's not able to attend today's kickoff, since we're going to be sharing some valuable information today. Oh uh, yeah, just just wanted to check because I don't have any access to the chat. I don't see any of the links that was provided. Okay, so I'm going to share the ak.ms 30 days, um, the Azure Developer 30 days link. And you know what? I will. I don't have a slide for the GitHub repo, but I will go ahead and create a slide for the GitHub repo uh, right now. Um, just just so we have that. So you just give me a second and we will have that too. Um, just, um, and because I know for time to time, if you're in another uh, team's organization, you might not always see the chat. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, really excited for you to um, participate in this challenge. Um, this is um getting everything set up, getting everybody in here, getting the um, link set up and the. All right, 
So everything's in. Hey everyone, I'm Sydney Andrews. Um, thank you again for coming in and um, participating in this with us. And um, I'm actually trying to see if I can put stuff side by side so that we can um, so you can see both me and um, <laughs> see the um, the slides. But um, this is our kickoff call. We got 45 minutes today. I want to walk you through our challenge that you have 30 days to do. Um, if you can complete the um, learn modules, uh, you'll get a 50% off voucher for the AC204 Azure Developer Certification. We're going to have uh, twice weekly calls at uh, two different times, uh, just to be friendly to different time zones, where it's just 30 minutes uh, twice weekly, where you can be able to just jump on. If you're stuck with a learn module, uh, you know, we'll be, try to help you out as best we can, uh, get you unstuck. And, you know, if you just want to hang out and maybe you finish the learn modules, maybe help out another uh, colleague, or if even if you don't need the support calls, um, we're just here to help get you through this challenge, get you that 50% off voucher and eventually get you through the certification if you're just here for the kickoff to learn what this is and you know eventually get yourself the voucher um you know kudos to you too um i just want got a lot of information to share with you tonight and looking forward to moving through which is essentially about 10 15 slides a little uh real quick demo of what you can look forward to in this challenge and i'm going to just jump right on in so there's two hyperlinks that I think uh, I really want you to care about tonight. Um, that or well, was tonight for me. Uh, it was definitely going to be different times for the rest of you uh, across the world. Um, AKA.ms Azure Developer 30 Days. That's going to be the hyperlink to the Developer 30 Day Challenge. If you go there and sign up, um, from the date you sign up, you have 30 days to complete the challenge to complete all approximately 35 learn modules. Um, if you do not complete them within the 30 days, it's okay. You can actually rejoin the challenge and attempt it again. So it's not a situation where, oh no, if I don't complete it within 30 days, I can never try again. You can always attempt it again, but I ask you all today to go sign up for the challenge. That way you have, you start the clock for your 30 days and you can attempt the challenge with the rest of our cohort. The next link I'm going to share, and all these links have been shared in the chat. Uh, I'm just sharing it on the screen for those who may not be able to access the chat. Is ak.ms, um, and this is the link to our GitHub repo. I might have put the wrong link in. Hold on. And I think the link for the GitHub repo is 30 days Azure Dev Challenge. Let me. I'll correct that in real time. That's one of the beautiful things about PowerPoint. I can correct correct things in real time. 30 days Azure Dev Challenge is the link to our GitHub repo. There we go. Nice little uh, real time <laughs> PowerPoint slide correction. Uh, 30 days Azure Dev Challenge is the link to our GitHub repo. We just have links to all of our office hours. We're meeting every Tuesday and Thursday um, throughout the month. Um, these these office hours are designed to different time zones. So for the most point. Um, I'm not expecting many people to jump in, but maybe one office hour a week um, if you need it. It's, again, put in different time zones on purpose. That way to be as convenient as possible for the most people possible. Um, those are the links. They're all over the chat. Getting into the meat of the things, I really want to talk about the Azure Developer Cloud Skill Challenge. So before we go into the agenda for tonight, I want to take you to the actual challenge itself. When you go to the link for the challenge, you'll land on this landing page, the Cloud Skills Challenge for Azure Developer. Um, it has a sign up link where you can click the begin now. That will start your clock for the 30 days. Um, here you have the FAQ. Um, a lot of those questions were already answered, but at any time you can go here and get those questions answered again. Um, there's a support link. So if you run into any problems signing up, um, cloud skills help at microsoft.com. If you, if you, uh, I'll tell you right now, if you come to us and, and access for help, we'll try to help you, but we're going to probably go to the same email to try and get support. So it's going to be a step faster. If you go to here yourself, they have a support team is phenomenal and it's going to be able to help you out. Uh, but most of the time, if you just click, um, begin now and log in, you're going to be signed up and able to go and participate and challenge yourself. Um, I already, I'm not logged in right now. You see this little guest icon, but if I go in and here's my logged in profile, I've actually reset the challenge for myself. So you can see what it looks like for somebody who's, you know, very early on in the challenge. I only have one out of 35 modules completed. 
And so if I, I'm in here, it tells me how many days and hours I have left. If I hit continue learning, you can see I have 35 Microsoft Learn modules in my collection. And you can see my progress as I go through each of these modules. Uh, you can see real-time progress for each of the modules, like which percentage I have completed, uh, the modules I haven't started, the modules I have completed all the way. And it allows me to just keep track of what I'm trying to do. And it's really great for me that I can see a running tally of where I'm at, uh, you know, how much time I have left um, for each of the modules and, you know, you know, how close I am to finishing. And this, you know, this is really my dashboard to my progress and my success. And remember this, you know, this is a group call. So if you, if you ever, if you got, if you got a question, you can raise hand, unmute, turn camera, whatever you need to do. Um, I'm here to help. So let's talk about how I want to help out tonight. I have five main things I want to do. I'm going to give you some notes, my field notes on how to be successful in this challenge. I'm um, going to give you some tips, some tips on how I was able to navigate both this challenge and other challenges. I'm going to project out uh, my recommendations on how to break this muff out so it's manageable. If you try to do 35 modules at once, it's going to be really difficult. So I'm not going to recommend doing 35 modules at once. Then I'm going to walk you through one of the tougher modules to parse just to give you an example of where you can get trapped and have a hard time walking through a module. And then I'm going to give you a recommendation where you should start this week and what I'm going to go into next week's office hours um, looking to help people with. Just like, because sometimes it's hard to just say, where should I start? So sometimes I make a recommendation of where you should start. And you don't have to take my recommendation. You can start anywhere you want. But sometimes it's just nice to have a recommendation. So my field notes. There are 35 modules. And there are not 35 days in March. So if you want to finish on time, I challenge you. You really should be trying to do about 10 modules a week. I know if you do 10 modules a week, that's more than 35 modules. But doing 10 modules a week gives you enough wiggle room and breathing room that you um, have, if, if an emergency comes up, if work gets really busy, you have enough breathing room that you can maybe get distracted with work or distracted with family or personal issues uh, for a while. So you know, challenge yourself to do more than you need. So I recommend do, trying to do about 10 modules a week. That way, um, if you get caught off guard, if you get distracted, if you get sidetracked, you're fine. You, you, you're on track. Try to attend one study group a week. They're staggered in different time zones for a reason. Um, I, I, I don't recommend attending both study groups unless you absolutely need to. Um, one study group is, is, is enough. If you don't need to attend either study group, that's fine too. But um, if, you, if you need the help, you know, try to attend one study group a week. Each study group especially for each week, we're going to try and focus on specific modules. So we're going to try to have a theme for each week that usually keeps things a little bit more organized so that we don't have a study group where 15 different people are trying to get help with 15 different modules. Uh, we'll never finish the study group. We'll, we'll never get anywhere with that. And the study groups are only 30 minutes. So um, we won't be able to help anybody if we go into it with that mindset. A couple of tips when you're working on these modules. These modules tend to be written by uh, engineers. So we'll read all the exercise instructions. Uh, sometimes, and I, I work with engineers, and I work I also I work with textbook manufacturers. Engineers are not textbook manufacturers. So read all the exercise instructions. Sometimes uh, they'll write a whole paragraph, and sentence number three will have the exercise instruction that you need to be successful. So read all the instructions before you type any code. Uh, you'd be surprised often that you'll glance at the instructions and say, oh, that's the code I need, and miss uh, a, a really important step. Um, save the challenge to your collection in Microsoft Learn. You probably noticed that there are some links that said save. Yeah, take advantage of that. You can save different things to your collections in Microsoft Learn. And that's a really great way to organize information and make it easier for you to find stuff later. Um, if you're working through a Microsoft Learn module, let's say you're working on an Azure Functions module, and you say, you know what, this is really useful information. I'd love to dig into this deeper. This is not the month to dig into it deeper. You have 35 modules to get through. Save that module, save that lesson, save that topic.
and, you know, come back to it a little bit later where you have a lot more uh, runway, a lot more time to dig into it deeper and, you know, do a lot more investigation into it. Uh, you know, take advantage of the ability to save collections of information in Microsoft Docs and on Microsoft Learn. Knowledge checks. These are the multiple choice questions that you see at the end of many Microsoft Learn modules. Take advantage of the ability that you can try them again and again and again. You know, don't approach a knowledge check and spend an hour, two or three hours trying to get it perfect. If you fail the knowledge check, it's OK. Try it again. Um, just if, if you're not sure, just try different answers at the knowledge checks, but don't spend a lot of time up front trying to get the perfect answer for a knowledge check. You know, sometimes it's okay to just go into a knowledge check pretty quickly and, you know, fail early, but, you know, uh, read the feedback on the wrong answers and use that as a learning tool rather than spend a lot of cycles trying to get the perfect answer the first time. So if we're projecting out for the month of March, um, and I had to take 35 modules and make groups of modules, I would say, and first off, before you start writing down the names of these modules, um, I'm, I'm going to try and pull request this into the GitHub um, link that we shared. But um, I, I don't recommend that you screenshot this or write down these list of modules because this is just an example of how you can group modules in a logical way to help you work through them. This is not meant to be a comprehensive list of the order you should work on the modules. So I don't want you to feel like you have to write all this down um, before I go through this. But like I, I recommend working on groups of modules in logical order. So like for instance, that first this first week, I recommend you work on modules that's really focused on hosting code in Azure. So modules around topics like Azure functions or you know choosing your approaches or durable functions or you know um, core tools or Visual Studio, stuff like that, you know, focus there. You know, projecting further into March, you know, integration and communication. So API management, Signal R, Event Hubs, um, Web Hooks, Q Storage, things like that, you know, service bus, things like that, you know, integration messaging. That's when you start moving um, into more difficult, challenging topics, you know, as you go deeper into March. Um, mid, as you start getting to the thick of March, that's when you probably want to take on as a developer the most complex topics. This is probably where the study groups are going to get the most intense. And this is probably where you're going to want to have the toughest topics. This is where I recommend you start doing data and security stuff. Um, Azure Storage, Azure SQL, uh, data, so blob storage, uh, RBAC, Key Vault, uh, security, policy, things like that where as a developer you may not deal with this typically in your day-to-day -day job, um, especially if you come in from um, – uh, 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 um, especially if you come from on-prem, um, this is stuff where you don't want to save this for the last week of March. You want to definitely do this second or third week of March. And you want to save the things that are most natural for developers. So things like um, spin up a virtual machine, uh, app service, deployment slots, things like that. Save that for the last week. Give yourself a nice, smooth, you know, easy landing in that last week of March. So again, this is not meant for you to write down. This is just to give you an example of how I can structure a month so that I'm, you know, not stressing myself out, not saving the hardest modules for last, most difficult modules for last. For structure a month, so I'm doing the difficult things in the middle of the month, um, saving the easier things for towards the end of the month where, you know, I've gone through the most difficult things and I'm just looking for an easy landing um, towards the end of the month. Now, all these tips and stuff I want to get it gave you. I want to walk you through an example of a module where I saw people had a difficult time. And I, I like to do this because I just want you to see a real world example of somewhere where um, first office hours, I can see this being the number one thing people are going to ask about. So just going to change the view here so you can see my screen full screen and just jump in. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see my desktop. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Um So we have this module um developing Azure Functions Core Tools. Really great module. 
and with uh, developing Azure Functions core tools, um, really normal stuff around, you know, how to use Functions core tools. We jump in, um, what are Functions core tools? And if you're not familiar with it, it's a suite of tools that you can install your local machine. Um, you can install it via NPM. So if you're already doing node development, it's just really great. It's really easy to install just on pulling this a node package. It allows you to run the function runtime locally. You can also pull the function runtime via Docker. Um, so, you know, lots of easy ways to get the function runtime on your local machine. Now, there's an exercise where they want you to run a function in a local machine using core tools. But instead of running it in your box, they're going to have you run it using the core tools in the Azure Cloud Shell using the Azure Sandbox. Now, if you've never used the Azure Sandbox before, the Azure Sandbox is a great um, tool where you can actually use an Azure subscription that belongs to Microsoft Learn. Um, you're still using your identity. It's the same identity that you're signed into Microsoft Learn with, but your identity is given temporary access to a Microsoft Learn subscription. Um, use the role-based access control, which you will learn about in one of these Microsoft Learn modules. And you're given very temporary access to a very restrictive amount of resources, just enough to complete a lab exercise. Now, in this specific exercise, you're given only access to the Azure Cloud Shell to to complete this exercise. So I have an instance of the Azure Cloud Shell is spun up. And if it's your first time, you're going to be asked to activate a sandbox. And when you activate sandbox for the first time, you may have to give um, the Azure um, Microsoft Learn permission to um, create a subscription on your behalf. And it's just create a, or, or creating a um, not create a subscription, excuse me, access your account so that they can um, give you access to their subscription. Excuse me. I had the terminology backwards. Now, going from here, they say, OK, go ahead and create a directory called Lone Wizard. So if make dir or make directory Lone Wizard. We're going to change to that Lone Wizard directory. So far, so e easy. Nothing's crazy here, right? And we're going to use Funkinet to init um, initialize a new function app. Now, it says, okay, step number three, enter two for Node. Step number four, enter one for JavaScript. So we're creating a new Azure function application using Node for the code and JavaScript for the language. Or no, Node for the framework and JavaScript for the language. All right, nothing's crazy so far, okay? Now, from here, this is where it starts to get interesting, right? Now, it says run funk new. Now, if you're, if you're moving really fast, you might have missed some of these steps because from here, you might be skipping around and you know, trying to run, um, run code dot, but you might notice that it's still saying, okay, now enter eight. It's just reading the steps nice and slow, even the notes in between. Enter eight for HTTP trigger, and then enter the function name, simple interest. So just slowly reading the steps can prevent us from having a mistake in the lab, right? And now it says we're going to open a Cloud Shell editor, which uh, for people who are, remember Visual, uh, Visual Studio Monaco, which was, you know, predecessor of Visual Studio Code, that's what this is pretty much. Uh, just a very lightweight IDE running in a browser. And then um, this is basically explaining us to us here how we're going to replace the code in index.js here with this JavaScript code to do a really simple um, calculation of um, interest. We're going to use control S to save this file and control Q to close the editor. Then we're going to start our function. Use a funk start. And then unfortunately we can't actually do anything because we can't access this function outside the cloud shell. And it explains that in detail why we can't because this is running within a container, but this container is inaccessible outside the cloud shell. So we need to use control C to stop the function. And then we have to read this very carefully. We need to start the function again, but pipe the output to this output.txt file. So 
I I have no not a do not have enough bravery to copy this verbatim. So I'll copy that, paste this play text, and then we'll curl to localhost seventy seventy one within the context of the cloud shell. But we're not going to pass in the query string parameters for simple interest. So it should give us an error message to supply the principal rate and term in the query string. So we will do that by running the command with all that data. And I'm just running through this a little quickly, but I'm just, I think the, po the point I really want to illustrate here is just running through these steps slowly and reading the instructions is going to make sure that I'm able to get through this exercise successfully. And I'm able to see the output at the very end of this exercise. So I was able to successfully complete this exercise when I hit continue. If I go all the way back to create serverless applications, and I go develop, test, and publish Azure functions, use Azure functions core tools. Here's the exercise we just did. I see a check mark by it indicating that I successfully completed that exercise within this module. So this is how I can progress through some of those more challenging exercises. And you'll see that, you know, there's other exercises we'll get to uh, when we do the cloud skills challenge and we'll get to other ones. I think there's another example. Um, that I show that um, like create a storage account using Azure portal where. Oh, this is another example I like to illustrate. Um, you can only have one sandbox at a time. So if we go to another module, let's say we jump it around, we activate sandbox. It's going to tell us that it needs to deactivate the sandbox for the other module. So yes, I'll activate a new sandbox. And again, this is not using my Azure subscription. This is using the Microsoft Learn Azure subscription. So this is wonderful. I don't have to use my Azure spend or my own money or credit card. I'm using the Microsoft Learn Azure subscription. And um, the only limitation here really is that there's a limit of 10 uh, Azure sandboxes I can use per day. So just be aware that, you know, when you destroy these Azure sandboxes, you only get 10 per day. And there's a limit of, I want to say, I can't remember, how, but each module has a lim a time limit. Like the sandbox won't live forever. And there's there's actual technical limits within the sandboxes. So this one has a limit of four hours. But this sandbox is for creating a storage account. So if you go in here, you try to do something like, I don't know, try to create a virtual machine. It won't let you because the sandbox is actually uses things like Azure policy to prevent you from creating stuff that you're not intended to create. So um, you will actually do a module on that on how to do that in your own Azure descriptions. It's pretty phenomenal how they um, implement that. <clears throat> Just to show all the cool stuff, how I'm able to jump into the Azure portal and it uses the Microsoft Learn Sandbox instead of my own Azure subscription. Just by cl clicking the Azure portal link for the Microsoft Learn module, I'm able to jump into the a special version of the Azure portal that's using the Microsoft Learn Sandbox, even though I have my own Azure subscriptions. So I don't use my own Azure subscription and don't have to spend my own money on doing these Microsoft Learn modules. So just lots of stuff I really wanted to show you today. Really excited about, um, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my train of thought, but, um, you know, be able to you know, effectively learn using these modules and uh, navigate around them. So, Going back to our presentation, I really want to talk about um, our first set of um, study groups next week. Um, I highly recommend you can do any modules you want, but I highly recommend focusing on modules around hosting code in Azure. So um, there's two modules around choosing how to store data and automate your business processes. Those are high level, 100 level modules. Uh, I recommend you do those two modules just because they're really simple and they introduce you to some of the basic Azure services you're going to use in all the modules. So definitely do those two. But if you're going to start anywhere, start with the Azure Functions modules. Um, they're, they're a pretty good starting place, especially for our developers. Um, start with the Azure Functions modules. Uh, one of them you'll see is the Azure Functions Core Tool modules, I just, uh, a module that I just demoed. Start there, work through those. We go to the study group uh, next week. Those are the modules I'm really going to be uh, hyper-focused around. And um, each of the study groups, uh, on both on Tuesday and Thursday of next week, we'll have a half an hour where I'll be around. Um, if you get stuck on any of these modules to help unstick you, um, answer questions, um, 
maybe, you know, if, if you need help with any of these, uh, whatever support you need to get through these modules. But I'm um, really hoping to hear success stories, hear people getting through these, but really want to see you get through all 35 modules uh, throughout this month and hear about all of you getting that 50% off voucher for the Azure Developer Certification and hear about all of you getting certified um, in AC204. For somebody said, if you already completed some of these modules of Microsoft Learn, are they marked as completing a challenge? I'm actually unsure about that. Um, I don't know if you've already completed, if it's marked as completed in the challenge. That's a really great question. Well, somebody said they're going to find out. We're going to find out in study group next week. Um, if you got any more questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, if you got questions, you want to unmute and say it, please feel free to share it that way. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be around for another five or 10 minutes, but other than that, I want to thank everybody for jumping on today. I really look forward to uh, seeing you all at the study groups and, um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this up for anybody who wants to screen grab this or anything like that. But, um, other than that, uh, thank you all for jumping on. Thank you so much, Sydney. Um, I'm going to share the links in the chat again, just in case, um, but this is being recorded. It will be on the Reactor YouTube channel in probably like 24 to 48 hours. Um, we can also share the link to it next week during the office hours. And when you go to the Reactor YouTube, it will be under the title of the event. So Azure Developer uh, Challenge Kickoff is how you would be able to, you will be able to find it there. Um, so yeah, just sharing the link to the challenge one more time. And yeah, like Sydney said, thank you all so much for joining. Um, and we can't wait to see you at office hours.